Well, hey parents, and welcome back to Playground. Uh, this video is actually just for you. We don't have an element for the kids today because what we wanted to talk about is what it means to become a house of prayer. Now, in the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about what it looks like to pray for our neighbors and what it looks like to pray for the nation, what it looks like to pray for the future. But before we get there with the kids, what we wanted to talk to you about is what does it mean to be a house of prayer um, as a culture in your house? Now, culture is a big word for me, uh, leading a big part of our organization and, and an incredible team of our volunteers. Culture is very important. Culture is not what we hope to be. Culture is who we currently are. And what that means is that whatever the result that we're getting, say in the spiritual development of our kids, is a result of the culture in place. And it means that the culture is working because cultures do what they intend to do. So we can't just hope to become a family that values spiritual development in our children. We can't just hope to be parents that pray with our kids. We can't just hope that our kids will develop a dynamic faith out of thin air. It's going to be accomplished according to the culture and to the organizational elements we have in place in our families. Now, here's what I'm not saying. What I'm not saying is that in order for your child to become a Christian one day, that you have to lead a family devotional every Friday night for an hour teaching out of the Old Testament and the old King James language. That That's probably not going to help them move into a dynamic faith, if I'm being honest. But, but more importantly is that what we want our kids to learn, what we want them to, 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 to take away from what we teach is going to be caught. It's going to be seen by example. Leaders set an example, right? Managers tell people what to do. And, and, and we know that just telling our kid to do something and threatening them with more chores or with less allowance or whatever, you can't really ground them right now, but, but you know, just demanding that someone does something, that's not leading, that's managing. And we're called to lead our families. We're called to lead our little ones. We're called to raise them up to follow the Lord. So how do we do that? We lead them to the Lord. We lead them in our actions. We lead them in our disciplines. We lead them in the way that we interact. I'll give you a few examples from my uh, childhood that I remember now as a dad of two. Is that I remember every morning, early in the morning, before I would wake up, that my mother would be sitting down drinking coffee and doing her, her Bible study. Every evening, I could find my dad sitting in bed reading his Bible. And what that developed for me is, is something to follow. Something to follow because I was following them to where they were. There are people positioned in our lives that we gravitate towards. We follow in their leadership, not because they're demanding something of us, but because they're leading us by their example. And so when it comes to being a house of prayer, for our little ones, for our little piece of the next generation, they are not going to do what we demand of them. They are going to do what they see us doing. God's intention for the church is not to be the primary voice of discipleship in the next generation. God's intention is that the family unit would be the primary voice of discipleship in the life of the next generation. But in a typical year, we can hope, best case scenario, for about 40 hours of influence for the year in the life of a child. But what we know is that in a typical year, not even a pandemic year, the family has over 3,000 hours of influence over a child's life. And in this year, it's gonna be way more than that because of all the time you're spending together. So a simple math is that is that we can't do more than you can do. So instead, we believe we can do more together. And it's not a cheesy line that we put on a t-shirt. It's, it's what we believe. We believe that God has called the church and the family to be one, to come together, to impact together the voice of the next generation. So we believe in you. We believe that you've got this. Now you say, I don't have a dynamic prayer life. Okay, just start praying. Just start praying. Let your children see your effort in connecting with God. Pray for your children. It's not very hard to think of things that we want for our children. Take those things to the Lord. He cares about your dreams for your children. And most importantly, pray over your children when they're awake, when they can hear you. And I promise you that that is going to make a bigger impact than you can possibly imagine. Even as my wife was in college and living at home after college for a short time, 
uh, we, we were dating and then we were engaged and, and we would be talking on the phone at night and she would say, hold on for a second, my parents are here to pray for me. As a 21 year old, her parents were knocking on the door saying, we want to pray for you. And that impact on her life has now carried to the next generation. And every night we pray for our two boys. Not because we are these dynamic prayers. In fact, prayer is something I struggle to remember as part of my spiritual disciplines. We're not big prayer giants, but we know the impact that it made in her life. Just like I know the impact it made in seeing my parents and their word every morning and every night. And so those things have dripped down to our generation. And now we're infusing those in the generation below us. But remember, we're not managing a house of prayer. We are leading a house of prayer so that what we teach can be caught. And it can be taken on as the next generation develops their own dynamic faith. Now what I'd like to do is pray for you. Just a really simple prayer, something you can copy and repeat if you want to. And uh, my hope is that it will inspire you to become a house of prayer in your home. Let's pray together. Hey God, thank you for everybody watching this video. And I pray that you will um, open up our hearts to remember, first of all, to remember that you went through a lot to give us the ability to pray and to talk with you and to have community with you. In fact, it took Jesus' sacrifice on a cross to open up this channel of communication. We don't need a temple. We don't need a sacrifice. We just simply can speak. And we don't even have to speak out loud. Just in the quiet of our hearts, we can communicate with you. Even more than that, when we don't know what to say, your word says the Holy Spirit will intercede on our behalf. So we're thankful for the mountains that you have moved to give us the ability to pray. And then secondly, God, um, help us to to not shy away from prayer because of the lies that we don't know what to say or that we won't do it right or the fear that it doesn't work. And instead, God, give us the courage to lay out our hearts before you, to lay out our fears before you, to lay out the hopes and dreams we have for our children before you. Give us the confidence, Lord, to pray over our children and to lead them, not force them, but lead them as we become a house of prayer in our communities. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.